Welcome everyone to another episode of Between Two Brokers. Today, um, we are going to talk about something that we learned from our wonderful coach, Andy McCarthy, Mm -hmm. with The Building People. Um, So he suggested at one of our sessions earlier this summer that we take this predictive index quiz test, something like that. I don't remember taking the test. Uh, It's because it took like less than two minutes. Okay, it took less than two minutes. So obviously, um, everyone has time for this. And um, we had Cynthia take it, you take it, Jason, Cynthia's husband, and then we had Tori take it. And when it was just me, you, and Cynthia, the funniest part to me was there's like a circle and it's divided into quadrants. And Cynthia and Aaron are right next to each other, right down here, and I'm all the way in the opposite corner, Mm -hmm. Um, which is why we work so well together as a team and why Cynthia and Aaron are a part of... uh, Get that thing closer to your mouth. Sorry. Um, So... This is why I have to have my business partner and my assistant have a complete opposite personality for me because otherwise nothing would get done well. Um, So we learned about um, each other and ourselves, and then we have a handy-dandy relationship guide that I think I'll share. (laughs) Um, So I do want to talk about a couple of things because, you know, we've learned this. So, you know, I've known Aaron for a long time, And uh, I do think that in a relationship, there's certain things. There's we just have this understanding that is um, more advanced than everybody else because we've spent so much time together. So when we were friends in college, which is really when we started hanging out, it was nothing but fun. When we got into the work environment in here, then I learned a whole different side of you that I didn't know. (laughs) <laughs> and, um, you know, the, the, so I, I went from fun, Aaron, and I do have to explain to everybody that she's fun all the time, to you're very, very serious. Yep. You're very, very quiet. And you are, um, gen- when you are working, you are, I would use the word like intolerant of a lot of things. Yeah. Like you're here to work. You're focused on your task. I understand that. So. I would say I don't take it personally from time to time. I do. I'm like, this bitch hates me. But (laughs) I know really like in the grand scheme, maybe only in that moment you do or, you know, or then I'm like, this bitch hates everybody. Yeah. Um, So anyway. But but you you have learned that right when I walk in, you say, "Um, I know you have a lot going on today, but when you have five minutes, I need five minutes of your time. And great. I'll put that in my mental calendar. So that you're not interrupting me while I'm in the middle of something. Yeah. And I, I totally get that because I will say I'm not really in the office that much. But when I'm sitting at my desk and somebody just shows up at my desk yeah. with their shit, I'm like, uh, what are you no, doing? bitch. Yeah. No. Yeah. Me too. But I think your face comes across nicer than mine, apparently. Let me see your face. Um, no, this is it. Okay. Um... <laughs> All right, so one of, okay, so I'm going to highlight a couple things. Aaron's strongest behaviors. Communication is direct, to the point, and sometimes brusque. Yep. Impatient for results. Put pressure on themselves and others for rapid implementation and is far less productive when doing routine work. I don't know that that's. Formal, reserved, introspective, and skeptical of new people requires proof to build trust in new people. If there is one thing that I will say that I have learned about you, that, uh, this just like hits the nail on the head. Yeah. And I think everybody that needs that comes to work for us needs to know this because you hold yourself to a very high standard. Mm-hmm. You hold everybody to a very high standard, mm-hmm. which this also brings up. Um, so it's you, you don't just like get an automatic pass. Now, I might act, I might be... Uh, uh, charming enough to make somebody <laughs> feel like they're automatically in, but n- I'm actually the same way. It takes me. No, I mean I pretty much trust people. It's like you're the owner at the bar and I'm the bouncer. Okay. You're like, come in, yeah, 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 yeah let's yeah. get you a drink, and I'm like, hold on, hold on, yeah, yeah, 
I need to see some ID. No, that's really good. That's a really good way of putting it. And I'm very just like open with people right away and very, very trusting with people right away. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean I trust them to do things to my standard because you know that I think that that's a very difficult way to live. But you think the best of everybody. Yeah, 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 I do. And I'm wary. So that's why we're partners. And okay, detail-oriented and precise follow-through is Deep and literal to ensure tasks were completed in accordance with quality standards because this bitch is all about a quality standard. Um, well thought out, thorough analysis, detailed knowledge of all pertinent facts. Doesn't that sound exhausting? Yes, but that's how she is. <laughs> um, her has confidence in own professional knowledge and ability to get things done quickly and correctly. So this is definitely you, but I also feel like this is one of the reasons that you have such a hard time giving up control. Yeah. Cause you're like your thought process is I'm going to do it better than somebody else. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, Aaron, takes until I met Cynthia, <laughs> she can yeah. do it better. And well, and again, for the things that you guys are both like really into, which is like yeah. detail oriented, because that's why you guys are next to each other. We're the same person almost. Aaron takes work responsibilities very seriously and expects others to do the same. I, I would say that this is also, you know, a gift and a flaw, as all of our stuff is, but um, expecting others to do the same as you, I, I think that's whatever is challenging it's a challenging way to be in business um okay in social matters reserved in private with little interest in small talk energy will be focused primarily on the work um let's see high exacting personal standards generally finds that it's not met by others to earn trust someone must consistently meet that standard and get results can you imagine? Thank God, I did that. <laughs> Can I, you imagine dating me? No. <laughs> no. I mean, Spence's favorite, one of my favorite Spence quotes is, I can't believe y'all are not lesbians. <laughs> no. Bless Spence for being able to put up with your ass. Yeah, because how could a man ever, ever please me? <laughs> not, you know, how, how could I mean that? How way. could anyone except Cynthia? <laughs> Okay, talk about me. Okay. <laughs> and I want to I want to say we are we are not we know we're not Oprah and what's her best friend's name? Gail. Like people are not dying to know all about us. We are explaining why this relationship works as a business relationship because we do get a lot of questions about like how to find the right business partner. Yeah. And I know, let's take Cynthia, for example, since she and I tested so similarly. We would not make great business partners because we're too much alike. Yes. I think this would be very helpful to do uh, as a, a husband or a couple. Yep. You know, because then we go through our analysis and it's like things that you need to be aware of. Like how this is what, if you do this, it's going to piss the other one off. So again, yeah, it's not us just like, we realize you don't give a shit about our work style, but if you have a business or you want to understand how to communicate, like for instance, having Tori come on. So we like co collaborating with Tori, Tori and I had to get very clear about my communication style, which is give me 10% of what you're saying. Yep. No more emails. <laughs> yeah. I get it that you're creative and detailed and have a lot to say. She wants to prepare a condense, lot. Condense, condense, condense. Stacy's Con like, I'll just figure it out when I'm there. Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah. wing it. Yeah, I'll wing it. But I'm yeah. also used to doing... Anyway, the point is it, it's so important when you have a new... When you have any relationship to go back. And, and we have to do these things regularly, too, and connect through Andy. I think that's one of the best things that's happened is he's basically like our marriage counselor. Yeah. You know, and we get to remember like this, these are the strengths and these are the weaknesses. So that's why we think this is important to share. Yeah. And, and again, we'll give you the, the name of this again and how to find it for your boyfriend. Yeah. Uh, business partner, whatever. Yeah. And Oprah, if you're listening. Hi, and Oprah. Hi. Hi. Um, okay. So n nothing on this list. Um, about Stacy will surprise you, I, I don't think. Strongly persistent, opinionated. 
Extremely casual with the rules. Yes, which is why we are going to hire a broker in charge. <laughs> because that's maybe not the best thing. <laughs> it's not the best thing for a broker in charge. It's a great way to be a salesperson. Yeah, and a great way to be a leader because people don't want to be micromanaged. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. like you guys figure out what works for you. Mm -hmm. If it's not within the box, then mm -hmm. that's fine. You'll, you'll figure it out. Um, yeah, she will bend rules in order to meet the objectives. <laughs> um, seemingly carefree, unruffled, unflappable, unworried. Yeah. Total opposite from me. <laughs> My mom kept asking me about that this weekend. She's like, how are you like this? Yeah. I was like, I don't know. Cause I just assumed you're always high. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> um, Let's see, patient, stable, consistent, easily trusting, um, again, completely opposite from me. Tolerant, easygoing, uncritical in getting along with others, and a focused listener. I will say the focused listener is um, dead on the money, because um, I, I feel like you also listen with your eyes. Um, anyone that doesn't know Stacy, she has these like ice blue eyes, and so when <laughs> sometimes when she's listening to you, you're like, is she reading my thoughts as well? <laughs> Because I feel like she can see through to the back of my head. Yeah, that's what people say. They feel like I can see inside their soul. Yeah. I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> like, can you put some sunglasses on? don't come around on? here because I can. <laughs> oh, I'm going to bring a blindfold when I have to talk to you about something serious. Um, this is another big thing. Willingness to take risk, likely to develop and act on ideas that are distinctly new or unconventional. The reason I say that Cynthia and I would not make great business partners mm -hmm. is because we would figure out what works for us and nothing would ever change. Mm -hmm. We are, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, and Stacy is constantly trying to push us to do things differently and drive the business forward, um, you know, hence the podcast. And then once I was really comfortable in that, she's like, let's record it on video. And I'm like, no. <laughs> No. Yeah, because that's what you say to fucking everything. I like doing it in my pajamas with no makeup on. <laughs> well, so did I. Um, but, you know, every, we, we are where we are today because of that um, character trait of yours. Um, very determined and persistent. Once a goal is set, they'll generally push hard to reach it regardless of the goal's popularity with others. Undaunted by criticisms or failures. Mm-hmm. Very true. Mm -hmm. Stacy is frank and outspoken, um, communicating factually at times bluntly with very strong conviction. I feel like we're similar on that, but yeah. um, I don't feel like I always used to be. I think that's something that I've learned is just necessary. Yeah, cut to the chase. Yeah, let's save some time here. Mm -hmm. um, that was pretty much it. Yeah. That, that was what I highlighted. And then our relationship strengths they're efficient purposeful assertive when communicating with each other stacy's eager to start conversations um and will be the communication in initiator with aaron 100 mm -hmm. able to encourage and act as a counterbalance when aaron feels frustrated by their com communication Dis discuss broad ideas stacy can but aaron is good at translate translating stacy's suggestions into specifics yeah, because I might just have an idea, and it's like, how are we going to do that? And I'm like, I'm like, well, let's not worry about that. Let's just do it. Okay. Yeah. Um, Aaron and Stacy may work hard to persuade each other, but may not listen closely to each other when there's a disagreement. Aaron may be overwhelmed by Stacy's eagerness to have a conversation. I read her. <laughs> I read her body language, and I listen to the tone of her voice. I rarely text anything with you, unless it's a joke about how I want my funeral to be. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shirtless gays <laughs> playing Janet Jackson, <laughs> serving champagne. Okay. Um, Aaron's tendency to rush conversations may frustrate Stacy. You don't rush conversations. Stacy's tendency to adapt or yield to preserve their relationship may limit the effectiveness of a collaboration with Aaron. I will say I am very sensitive to you and your moods, and I do not want to piss you off. So yeah. sometimes I hold back. Thank you. Um, okay. Aaron may feel like Stacy communicates without getting to the point. Stacy may feel like Aaron is too focused on details. 
Anyway, um, and then it gives us some some relationship t- tips, which is just basically respect each other, be very clear, whatever. We get each other. So yep. I think that that was very useful information, too. And, um, again, I want to recommend Coach Andy. This episode was is not officially brought to you by Coach Andy McCarthy with the building people, but I can just tell you that he's really moved our business forward significantly since we've been using him, and we meet with him every couple of weeks, and Cynthia does too, and Tori's met with him, and just learning about each other, you know, know thyself, and everything gets better um, in all aspects. So, And I, we, we have too many people on the team to, like, sit down and go through everybody's but we, um, if you've seen pictures of our office, it's just one big open space and, you know, everyone's, you can hear conversations and everything. And, um, one of our agents did approach me recently and was just like, I don't feel warm and fuzzies from you. And I, I was just like, I'm, I'm sorry that that's the impression that you got. I said, but Cynthia and Stacy, who know me very well, will tell you that I, when I'm here, I'm here to work and I don't like to be interrupted. Yeah. Um, and so I, I think if you work in an environment like this, it is good to mm-hmm. just go ahead and identify your predictive index behaviors with everyone so that no one's feelings are hurt and there's no misunderstanding. Right. I right. don't mean to be rude. Yeah. It's just the way I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, well, thank you guys so much for listening. This wraps up this truly fascinating episode, I'm sure. Um, Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. And tune in to our next episode. If you have any questions or amazing five-star feedback, then please email us at (laughs) podcast at smithspencer.com. Thanks so much for tuning in.